Hello everybody, this is Stranger Gamer back for another Water Washout Tournament video thing. And yes, we've got four more lovely matches for you to sink your teeth into, so let's get on with them. Alright, let's get on with this matchup. And at first, in the red corner, we have the Satiosaurus. I uh, don't see too much of this guy, to be honest. But, wonder if he'll make a big in But can he make a big impression in this tournament? Well, it's gonna be tough because, in the blue corner, we have the Ampelosaurus. Ampelosaurus, the vine lizard himself, must be weary of that, um, aqua vortex. As it can nullify all the opponent's moves in one turn. But I, I don't know who has, who has the advantage, I, I think the Satiosaurus might have the slight advantage here, but, you know, we're just going to have to find out. Okay, that's a freeze, that's a scissors. And that's also a scissors. So we start off with a tie. Ooh, the Satiosaurus gets the first hit, though. Not doing too much damage. I think all his power is in the crit. And speaking of crit, that Futaba cannon has been triggered. And if he does get it off, we're going for it. He's going for it. And he gets it off. Hang on. I've, I've messed up my um, moves I have for the right side. I, instead of having IKJ, I have ILJ. Boosh. Oh my god, you almost killed it! Ampelosaurus, ample in on here. <laughs> and Ampelosaurus is dead. I mean, he does get a hit off, but... Well, he does get a hit off with a tie, but... It's not enough to survive. And the Satiosaurus takes a convincing W into round two. Alright, on to our round two. Well, the Ampelosaurus... Equal the, even the score, or will the Satiosaurus take a comfortable win into the quarters? Yeah, we know what we got. Oh, oh. <laughs> Here's me just spam clicking K and it doesn't work. Yeah, I'll probably change, I'll change that later. Ooh, we start off with a tie. Um, I think they both take the same amount of damage. Maybe the Satyosaurus takes a little bit more. Ooh, the Satyosaurus gets the first hit again. Will this Amplosaurus actually get a hit off? Or will the Satyosaurus dominate? Oh, he's not going through Futaba Cannon this time. Oh, it's a big mistake! As the Amplosaurus finally gets off a hit. Wow, I did lots of damage! Wow! I, I, I'm, I'm genuinely impressed. Like, Amplosaurus. I wouldn't take Amplosaurus for an attacker. Well, I kind of would, but I wouldn't. But Ooh, the Amplosaurus looking pretty good. Oh, is this a pattern? No. What is this move? Oh, it's Tail Smash. A Tail Smash coming in. Smashing the Satyosaurus into a pillar. <laughs> like a sauropod could do like, like Amplosaurus could do that. Like, you could hit him with his tail, but you wouldn't send him flying. Oh, we have a tie. And this time, it is the Ampelosaurus that's dominating. But remember, that Futaba Cannon can change everything. But the Ampelosaurus is not letting it happen, as another Tail Smash comes in to finish off the Satyosaurus. And even the score. So, we are level... We are level... Pickings here, and it's all going to come down to this next round. Right, on to our final matchup between these two. And as we as we see here, well, we know what we're up against: the Satyosaurus and the Ampelosaurus. Satyosaurus was pretty much the dominant force in the first matchup between these two, winning quite convincingly with a big Futaba cannon. Round two, the Satyosaurus started well, but the Ampelosaurus did come back into it and take the second round win. But whoever wins this matchup will go through to the quarterfinals. 
So, let's find out who it will be. Ooh, the Amplosaurus gets off a tail smash. We saw how effective that was last time. Oosh. A technique boost there. Increasing the odds of Aqua Vortex being triggered if the Amplosaurus gets hit. That is, I should point that out. But speaking of Aqua Vortex. Oosh. Wow, so why did it do so much damage last time? Oh! Oh, I'm an idiot. It's counter type, isn't it? <laughs> That's why it did so much damage before. It's, it's a counter type dino. I forgot. Well, counter type. Tide effect, tide recovery type. It doesn't matter here because the Amplosaurus is in complete control here. The Satiosaurus. Well, the Satiosaurus is dead. The Amplosaurus showing no mercy to the land whale and defeating it and making it look like a beached whale. Dead. And the Amplosaurus will book his place in the quarterfinals. Right, but strap yourself in, kiddies, because we have three more matches for you to tuck into. This should be a pretty quick one because at first we have the Decreosaurus. Um, again, one of those other sauropods like um, Cynthiosaurus don't see too much of. But it is in this game and it's here to win. But it's going to have one hell of an uptail battle because in the blue corner we have Brontokins, the tournament favourite and in my opinion the best water dinosaur in the game. But the, the Creosaurus is probably going to be wetting himself, literally. Because if the Brontokins gets into it, gets his spectral armour, that spectral destroy will annihilate anything in its path. I think we all know that Brontokins is the odds on favourite for this tournament, but with Random Dumb the Generator, anything can happen. So, can the Decreosaurus pull off the big upset? Well, so far, no. And there's the Anyanguera for the Anyanguera dive. Uh, not too much damage dealt. Okay, maybe the, maybe a little bit more there. Hell, I don't even think Brontokins will ever get to this far. Ooh, the Brontokins does get hit though. The Tide Bomb from the Decreosaurus. Not too much damage dealt. Not a surprise. Because I feel like Brontokins has quite a decent amount of health. And there's a hit from Brontokins. And I think that's Defense Burst. And there's the Anyanguera as well. Oh no, defense boost, my mistake. Oh, and an Aqua Javelin. This might be curtains for Decreosaurus. Yep, yeah, no surprise there. Brontokins wins the first round. And he's probably going to win the second round. Because <laughs> he's that powerful. Alright, let's let's go up. Let's get on with round two. And oh, we're back in the Alpha Arena again. <laughs> it's going to be a rematch. Well, a mirror match. Can the Decreosaurus dig deep to pull out an equal in win? Or will the Brontokins continue to dominate <laughs> those Brontokins? Oh, oh, the Decreosaurus does get a hit. Does get the first hit. Oosh. But as we saw last round, not too much damage dealt. I feel like all its power is in its critical move. But the tie bombs will definitely help if it's a t if there's a tie. Ooh, the Brontokin strikes back though. Anyanguera coming in for the Anyanguera dive. Yeah, And there's a defense boost as well, tightening his grip on this match. Oh come on! Two and six aren't the only numbers in the number generator pool game. Number generator thing. 
but no Onion Guirin and no Aqua Javelin, so the Decreosaurus is still in it. But he really needs to strike back here. Oh, a tie! And there's the tie attack, dealing extra damage to Bromptikins. That's what the Decreosaurus needs. And it doesn't matter because Bromptikins has won. <laughs> no surprise here to see that Bromptikins takes a 2 0 win into the quarterfinals to face the Ampelosaurus. Yes, Bromptikins gonna be really tough to stop. And honestly, I don't see anyone stopping him. And I'm probably gonna say he's gonna win the tournament. But it's early days yet, so. Still hoping that someone can pull off an upset on him. But anyway, enough of that matchup. Let's move on to our third match of the day. Alright, we're ready for our third match of this video. And in the blue corner, red corner, sorry, we have the, the sauropod with a big heart, the Gondwana Titan. Yes, he may be the smallest dinosaur in this tournament. Well, I think he is. Maybe irritate that, actually. No, no, I think this guy is the smallest dinosaur in the tournament. Too small to be called a sauropod, but he does have a big courageous spirit. But it's going to be tough because in the blue corner, as you can see here, we have Joe Borea. Um, was quite a little bit, was quite impressive in the, my big tournament. I forgot who used it, but it, it did pretty well. Oh no, I used it for Team Africa, didn't I? And it didn't fit too well. What am I on about? But yeah, wow, look at this. I like how they make the, um, how they go the extra mile to make the Gondwana Titan a little bit smaller than other sauropods. I think that's a cool touch. Ooh, the Velociraptor's coming in for the critical block. The Gondwana Titan's going to have to be careful. And remember, if a move gets nullified, as per my new rules, the Joboria's move will automatically be rock. So it's just a matter of generating Gone One Titan's move, which will also be rock. Ooh, the move breaker there, nullifying the rock. And the Gone One Titan gets off a big hit there. Six and a six. So it's a tie. The move breaker there, nullifying the scissors move, but the rock move does get to come back. Ooh, the Stromeo rush there as the Gonwana Titan does get off another crit. And I think this might be good for Joe Borea. Oosh. Oh, the Joe Borea hanging on by a thread. Ooh, the Joe Borea does get a crucial hit. But I don't know if it's going to be enough. Now, this is more like it. We want more matches like this, where it's back and forth, where it's end-to-end. -end. And I think that's curtains for Joboria. But it did come close. But the Gondwana Titan just pulled through in the end. And wins the first round. Right, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to round two. Alrighty then, on to round two. And while well, we know the combatants, we have the Gondwana Titan in the red corner and the Joboria in the blue corner. Can the Joboria even the score, or will the Gondwana Titan take a 2-0 win? I have a little bit of an upset because Joboria is pretty good, a pretty good dinosaur, Joboria. I mean, I'd probably say he's better than Gondwana Titan. Okay. So it would be a little bit of an upset. Ooh, ooh, what's this? Ooh, it's an ocean panic from the Joboria. We didn't see any minuses. We didn't see anything like that from Joe Borea last round. Yes, yeah, so I tried to use a um, moose that the dinosaurs used in the anime, if they featured in the anime, which Joe Borea did, and Joe Borea used Ocean Panic. I was also going to put Shockwave in, but I thought, no. Stick with Ocean Panic. That was, like, his move. Oh, I've done it again. I've done it. Okay. Okay, well, it would have been a tie, so I'll go paper. Uh my mistake. My bad. Okay, this time the Joboria does get off a hit and a critical block to boot. Boosh, boosh. You know what that means? Next round the Joboria will go for a rock. 
Oh, I'm the joke. And the Joe Boria dominating round two, defeating the Gonwana Titan. Ooh, we're getting some good matches so far, aren't we? Well, you know, you all know what this is going to suggest. It all comes down to the next round. Alrighty then. Ooh, we're at the Alpha Arena this time. The winner of this match will advance to the quarters, the loser will be going home. So who will win and who will lose? Who will be washed out and who will be washed in? No, that don't make sense. Ooh, the Gonwana Titan gets the first hit. And there's a Tuku for a dive. And a Dromeo Rush. Big damage coming Joe Boria's way. Whoosh. Zhilibi slap. Oh, okay, maybe not too much damage. Ooh, the, the Gonwana Titan going for a crit. But... So did the Jobaria. I don't know, I lost my words there. <laughs> wow, the Gonwana Titan absolutely dominating this round so far. It'll be tough for Jobaria to come back from this. Oh, he does get a hit though. And, there's, and the crit block will come in handy. As that will prevent the Gonwana Titan from winning the next round matchup. Oh, a big crit coming from the Jobaria. Oh, massive damage. And all of a sudden, it's even Stevens. Oh, is it time? Oh, it's all comes down to this. Oh, and the Jopori has fallen! The Gone One of Titan has won! Quite an upset there, as the Gone One of Titan defeats Jopori and, and advances to the quarterfinals. Yes, that was a surprise. A good match, that was. That was a good match. Right, on to our final matchup of this video. Alright, at first in the red corner we have the Shunasaurus. Be wary of the Aqua Vortex, as I could nullify all of its opponent's moves. And speaking of opponents, in the blue corner we have the Baryonyx. The only Spinosaur to feature in this episode. And that Aqua Whip could do a lot of damage. As it did have Aqua Whip in the anime, so here it is. <laughs> oh, I love Aqua Whip. I loved it in the anime, it was awesome. But will the Baryonyx get to use it here? A clash of bronzes. The winner will face the Gonwana Titan in the quarters. Ooh, the Shunosaurus gets the first hit down the Baryonyx with that tail. Ooh, but the Baryonyx does strike back. And a Dromeo Rush. I think that's Dromeo Rush? I, I always get Dromeo and Struffield mixed up. I think that's Dromeo Rush. Ooh, the Baryonyx does get another hit off, and it's a stomping hammer. Oosh. Shunosaurus not very really good, but the Aqua Vortex has been triggered, so if it is a tie, the Shunosaurus will get it off. Ooh, and it is a tie, and the Shunosaurus is going to get it off. Whoosh. And splish bleh. Which means all of Baryonyx's moves are going blah blah. But can the Shunosaurus take advantage of this? Oh, I've done it again. How many times have I done this this video? Click paper instead of scissors. 
Okay, yeah, the Shunosaurus would have won the matchup, so it's only fair that the Shunosaurus wins the matchup. Alright, six. Hate scissors, stranger. Scissors. But it doesn't matter in the end, because the Baryonyx won anyway. <laughs> oh, well. But how many times have I mess misclipped the days? Ridiculous. But at least this time, it didn't cost the opponent. And it didn't affect the outcome, because Baryonyx was going to win anyway. So, let's move on to round two. Oops, <laughs> move the screen then. Okay, we're in the volcano zone for the third and final matchup between these two. Wait, no, it isn't the second round. <laughs> the Baryonyx has a 1 0 lead. Well, this will be the final matchup if Baryonyx wins. But if the Shukasaurus wins, we'll go to a deciding round. Ooh, a good start from the Baryonyx. A Dromeo rush coming in. Oosh. Ooh, an Aqua Vortex right off the bat for Shunosaurus. Well, it's only right off the bat if he gets it off, but if he doesn't, well, tough. <laughs> oh, he's not going to get it off this time. Instead, the Baryonyx is going to get off an Aqua Web. Lots of damage dealt, and the Shunasaurus misses his chance for Aqua Vortex. Ooh, we have a tie! The tie attack there from the Shunasaurus actually de dealing damage to the Barry. But the Shunasaurus still has a mountain to climb. And while that hit is going to help, it is going to help getting hits off. It really needs to get some crits. Ooh, another tie. Oh, the Shunosaurus hanging on by a thread. Oh my goodness, the Shunosaurus might actually come back from this. Oh, look at that all of a sudden. It's all or nothing now for the Shunosaurus. He either wins this matchup to take it to a deciding round, or he loses and gets sent home. Or it could be a tie and they both lose. Oh, it's a tie. The Shunosaurus. Coming from behind to snatch a tie against the Baryonyx and leaving it at 1-0 to the Barry. You know what that means? Since that was a draw, we've got to do it again. Alright. Well, on to another second round matchup because we had the Baryonyx win the first round and then it was a draw in the second round. Yes, I know people are thinking, well, hang on a minute, the Shunosaurus won that round. No, no. They both would have died in the tie. But the game doesn't do draws, so the so the game will just randomly select one of them to be the winner. And in that case, they selected the Shunosaurus to be the winner. That's why I declared that last round a draw, because it basically was. They both would have died in the tie. The game just decided that the Shunosaurus survived. Okay, just to be, just to be clear about that. That's why last round was a tie. Anyway. That round is done, and we're on to this round, and that is not a good start for the Shunosaurus. An Aqua Whip from the Barry right off the bat. Taking away half of the Shunosaurus's health, and to add insult to injury, a Dromeo Rush. The Shunosaurus needs to get his act together here, otherwise he'll be going home. Ooh, a tie will help, and an Ocean Panic will help. The Shunosaurus here, that could be a crucial hit from him. <laughs> Why would the Baryonyx be phased about going underwater? I mean, it was a fish eater after all. And it wouldn't surprise me if it, if it could swim. But anyway, moving on. Ooh, and then another tie. But no ocean panic this time. The Shunosaurus wearing down the Barry with ties. And another tie. And yet another tie. The Baryonyx is getting taken out by ties. Oh, and the Shunosaurus has even the score. Several consecutive ties and the tie attack combo wearing down the Baryonyx until it was in lethal range 
of the Shunasaurus's next attack. And we are all square. So you know what that means? It's going to come down to this next round. But here we go. And well, we know the combatants by now. This is a fourth matchup against each other. Well, the Baryonics, it's been quite a close... Yeah, it's been quite an even match between these two. I mean, no surprise, since they are both bronze dinosaurs and, well, the Shunasaurus has more technique, but I think the Baryonics has more attack, so... I'd say, yeah, it's been a very even match so far. But only one of these can go through. And, well, once again, the Dromio Rush and the Aqua Whip combo run off the bat for Baryonics. Boosh. Ooh, but this time, the Aqua Vortex gets triggered. Well, the Shunasaurus could do with a lot more ties in this this time, as he will get Aqua Vortex off and nullify the Baryonyx's moves. Ooh, but no tie this time, but the Shunasaurus does get a hit. So I don't think he'll be too bothered. Ooh, but the Baryonyx strikes back. And another Dromeo Rush is going to chip away at the Shunasaurus's health. Oh, he's going to kill it? Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Um. Well, after all our grueling matches, the Baryonyx stands tall and reigns victorious. And will advance to the quarterfinals to face a Gondwana Titan. Right, now that all the matches for this video are done, let's have a look at the table. Alright, let's let's look at the format now. So we have a quarterfinal matchup here between the Amplosaurus, who came from behind to defeat the De no the Satiosaurus against Brontokins who dominated against the Decreosaurus. And yeah, I, Amplosaurus is good, but I'm gonna I'd expect Brontokins to win here. And down here we have the Gondwana Titan, surprise victory over the Jogboria, facing off against the Baryonyx. After defeating the Shunasaurus in a very tight round. I mean, I'd probably say this is this was the most competitive match so far. In any of these tour mini tournaments, I'd say this has been the most competitive match. Such an even match, but the Baryonyx just pulled through. So, stay tuned. Next time, we will have the Saltosaurus against the Nemectosaurus. Alpha Irritator against Spinosaurus Dinotector. Spiny against the Margosaurus, and the Thing against Augustinia. So, this is Stranger Gamer, signing out.